Welcome to the video, my name is Alexi and on this channel I cover all things Azure and today we are going to check out the notebooks in Microsoft Fabric. Notebooks allows users to write and execute code in various different programming languages including Python, SQL, Scala and R. You can use notebooks for data ingestation, data preparation, data analysis or other data related tasks. Notebooks in Fabric have a ton of cool features. I'm going to cover many features just very briefly in this video since this is an introduction video to notebooks. However, I will be coming back to many of those features in the upcoming videos. But now, let's fire up the fabric and let's check out how you can use notebooks in Microsoft Fabric. Now we have the fabric open here. Let's start by creating a new notebook first. And this will open up the notebook development UI where we do the actual development work. Let's first name our notebook according to our naming conventions. Let's first go through the tabs that can be found here. We have the Home, Edit, Run, Data and View tab. Let's start from the Home tab. Here we have the first button to save this notebook as a new notebook or download it or open up the settings. Then we have the run button for the notebook where we could run the notebook, which means that basically we would execute the code in our notebook. Then we have a button for stopping the session. It can be now clicked since I don't have any sessions running. And then we have the default language for our notebook. Here we can see that we have many different languages to choose from, but I would like to keep this as a Python for now. Then we have the environment where we would be running this notebook. I actually changed this now to my testing environment. And lastly, we could open up this notebook in VS Code if we would want to. Under the Edit tab, we could first toggle the autosave on or off, and then we have some undo or redo buttons and some options to modifying the contents of the notebook. Under the Run tab, we can find the Run button like we found in the home page, also the Stop Session button. And here we have the possibility to add this notebook to a pipeline. And then we have an option to schedule this notebook to run at a certain schedule. And here we have the all runs button that would allow us to monitor the notebook runs for this notebook. Also here we could change the session type for this notebook. Next we have the data tab and here we have only one option to transfer the data frame in Data Wrangler but this feature I'm not going to cover in detail in this video. And lastly we have the view tab. In here we can change the layout of the notebook from standard to side by side and then we can view the table of contents. Also check out the keyboard shortcuts for this notebook. And lastly we could enable or disable the line numbers for our cells. Next let's add a lake house to this notebook. So this would be connected to a lake house that I would choose. This can be done here at lake house and clicking the add button and let's select the existing lake house and I would like to select my demo lake house here. In the previous video I copied this movies.csv to this lake house and here we have that movies data. So we can play around with that data a bit. But first let's add some content to our notebook. Let's first convert this first cell into a markdown cell so we can write some markdown language here. Let's create a header for this notebook that says this is an example notebook for a tutorial. Next let's create a regular code cell and since we have selected the Python to be the default language in this notebook the code that will be written here will be Python. So let's just create a variable called var1 and set the value for that to be ABC and then let's just print out that var1. Next I will show you a cool feature how you can quickly select the data from the lake house that has been attached to this notebook. We can just drag and drop the table from the lake house to this notebook and it will automatically create the required PySpark code for retrieving the data from that table. And also by default it limits the amount of rows that will be fetched but we don't need that limit here so we can remove that from the code. And this code here would allow us to select everything from that movies table and then display that here in the notebook. A little bit later on I will show you how that code is being executed and what happens when it runs. But next I will show how you can change the language to something other than your default language here in the notebook. And we can use the SQL here as an example. We can change the language to SQL by adding two percent signs and then SQL and this would tell the notebook that this cell needs to be run as Spark SQL and not Python that is the default language for this notebook. And we can write some SQL code here that would retrieve the contents from the movies table. And now let's add a little bit more markdown language to this notebook so I can demonstrate to you how the table of contents would work. 
Let's add PySpark here and then let's add Spark SQL here as a header to, to this notebook. And then we can navigate to the view tab and open up the table of contents and see that we have this table of contents here. And here, if we would have a very long notebook, we would be able to navigate the notebook based on the headers. So this is a quite handy feature and also would allow us to document things here to this notebook. The last cool thing about the markdown, I will show that we can actually drag and drop images to this notebook. I have this fabric logo here that I will drag and drop from my computer to this notebook and it will actually add that photo to this notebook. How cool is that? This would allow you to create this kind of a documentation to this notebook and add some pictures here as well that would that would make the documentation probably more understandable if you need so. Since this notebook is meant to be a highly collaborative tool, we have also a possibility to add this kind of a comments to this notebook and comment things. This comment tab can be opened up by hovering our mouse on top of this cell that we want to add comments to. And here we can find the possibility to add a new comment thread to this cell. And here we can actually write some comments and add them to this cell. And we have also a possibility to tag some peoples. And I will now just tag myself to here. And here in the right hand side of this cell, we can see that we have this kind of a indicator that indicates that there are comments tied to this cell. Next, let's execute this notebook by selecting the run all button. This will actually take a while, probably like a few minutes, since the fabric will start the Spark cluster on the background that will then execute this notebook. So with a little bit YouTube magic, we can speed things up and jump into the execution. Now the cluster is ready and we are starting to execute the cells one by one, going from top to bottom. We can see that our first cell printed ABC and now our second code cell is executing and it is fetching the data from the movies table and then displaying it. And we can see that it worked fine. And then our last Spark SQL cell is executing and it executed also fine and printed the same data that were printed in the PySpark cell. And since we have the data here now, I can show that we have these possibilities to visualize the data quickly. So we can open up the charts tab here and we can see that we can do these quick visualizations for this data. And we can actually customize this chart quite a bit by using the customize chart button here. But for now, let's not play around with this too much. The last feature that I want to show you is that we have this possibility to inspect the data here and get the information about the values that we have here. This would be very handy if you would need to figure out the primary key for this data, for example, and check out what kind of missing and check does it have any missing values or is that value really unique. But there are many cool use cases that this inspect can be utilized. And I hope that Microsoft really will expand the features of this inspect tab, since this could come in handy when doing some data engineering work. If you found this video helpful and learned something new, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for more Azure and Fabric content. Also, if you have any suggestions that you would like to see me cover in the upcoming videos, let me know those in the comment section down below. Now, I thank you for watching and see you in the next video.